It was a special pleasure to see things eaten, to see things blackened and changed. With the brass nozzle in his fists, with this great python spitting its venomous kerosene upon the world, the blood pounded in his head, and his hands were the hands of some amazing conductor, playing all the symphonies of blazing and burning to bring down the tatters and charcoal ruins of history. What's up, everybody? Welcome to my new series, where we're going to take a look at some of the books on the banned book list. Now, this is a pretty controversial topic at the moment, but what I want to do is I want to take a look at the history of banned books, why certain books have been banned, and what you can do to access books that may have been banned in your area. We're also going to talk about the danger of banning books, as well as why it's so important to keep all books, even the books that you don't like or agree with, available to anyone who wants to read them. If you like what you see and you want to help the cause, don't forget to follow and smash that like button and of course hit the little bell icon so you'll be ready when my next video drops for my first video in the series if you couldn't tell by the intro i decided to go with perhaps the most ironic book on the banned book list fahrenheit 451 by ray bradbury so you're not even gonna talk about it about what about your face oh no nah, i don't want to talk about it but where'd all your hair go well if you must know some stuff went down on my twitch stream and one of my viewers voted for me to shave my beard off but don't worry, it'll be back soon, I hope. But let's get on with the video. Fahrenheit 451 was written by Ray Bradbury in 1953. Set in a future society where books are banned and firemen burn any that are found, the title itself is a reference to the temperature at which paper will burn. The novel follows the story of Guy Montag, a fireman who begins to question the status quo and ultimately rebels against it. As Montag navigates his changing beliefs, he meets a group of rebels who memorize books in order to preserve their content and eventually joins their cause. Along the way, Montag's relationships with his wife and the people around him are tested, and he must confront the consequences of his choices in a world where dissent is not tolerated. Fahrenheit 451 is a strong take on the perils of information overload and the spectacle of media, as well as the dangers of censorship and the importance of intellectual freedom. So of course it ended up on the banned book list. Could it be more ironic? It's like rain. No, Alanis, none of those things you sung about were ironic. They were just a series of unfortunate events. More lemony snicket than ironic, but enough of that. Now in Fahrenheit 451, Ray Bradbury was writing about what he considered to be a 1950s view of a dystopian future. At the time, many believed some of his ideas to be far-fetched or unimaginable. But the funny thing is, a lot of what Bradbury wrote about in Fahrenheit had correctly predicted some of the things that we're seeing today. In his novel, Bradbury wrote about what he called seashells, or thimble radios. They were little buds you could stick in your ears to listen to music, news, or whatever else you preferred. These are similar to the earbuds and noise-canceling headphones we see today. In Fahrenheit, people use these thimble radios to drown out the world around them. The hero Montag's wife even uses them to sleep. In the story, they add to a sense of isolation that we feel throughout. I mentioned a sense of social isolation throughout the tale, and another element that adds to the disconnect and parallels some of the things that we see today is the obsession with large screens. Bradbury talks of televisions being parlor walls, taking up the entire room. The parlor walls are loud and distracting, constantly pumping out senseless entertainment and advertisements. Sound familiar? The book also warns against pervasive surveillance in order to maintain control. In Fahrenheit, there's a mechanical hound set to sniff out books, contraband, or anything else that goes against the social norms. At one point, the hero gets chased by this robotic dog while the government records it. The scary thing is, the surveillance that Bradbury dreamed up actually pales in comparison to the CCTV feeds, drones, and audio monitoring we have today. Another eerie similarity between today's world and Bradbury's dystopia is how the people of both worlds are so dependent on social networking and reliant on social media to tell them what to think. From the seashells to the interactive parlor walls, people were being bombarded with information causing some to have information overload. The hero expresses the way this constant stream of interaction has overtaken the actual world around him, stating, 
Nobody listens anymore. I can't talk to the walls because they're yelling at me. I can't talk to my wife. She listens to the walls. I just want someone to hear what I have to say. And maybe if I talk long enough, it'll make sense. A fellow rebel, a professor named Faber, responds, the average TV commercial of 60 seconds has 120 half second clips in it, or one third of a second. We bombard people with sensation. That substitutes for thinking. Now at this point, I know you're probably asking, did Bradbury write for The Simpsons? I mean, he's spot on with some of this. In the 1950s, people saw Fahrenheit as science fictional hyperbole. It was inconceivable that any of these ideas would actually become a reality. And he was touching upon subjects that were new ideas for many people at the time. This is part of what led the book to be partially censored or just outright banned. It was originally banned from school for curse words, particularly the phrase goddamn. In 1967, an edition of Fahrenheit 451 called the Bal High Edition censored curse words and changed some of the other words around, but did nothing to alter the actual context of the story. The book has faced multiple challenges since its release. The most notable recent attempt to ban it came in 2016 in Texas. Ah, good old Texas. It's the Florida of the Southwest. In 2006, they tried to ban the book in Texas on religious grounds. They claimed that because in the book, the Bible was banned and one was even burned, that it went against their religious beliefs. And while banning religious texts is a serious subject in itself, one that we're going to tackle later on in the series, the book does nothing to infringe on anybody's religious liberty. And since I know I'm off the leash for now, I'll mention that religion is going to be a common theme as we move forward into the series and into the discussion on banned books. And it's not to knock religion or disrespect anybody's beliefs. We're just going to present the facts as they are. And if that's an issue for you, you might be a bigger part of the problem than you realize. I mean, let's be real here. You can't complain about cancel culture in one breath and be okay with banning books that you disagree with in the next. Saying we won't go to somebody's show or listen to their music or refusing to support an artist because we disagree with them or because they're a shitty person is a lot different than saying nobody else can watch or listen either. One is a preference or choice. The other is censorship. Okay, rant done, back to the video. I read Fahrenheit 451 for the first time in high school. At that point, much like the people of the 1950s, I didn't yet see the connection to our reality today. Reading it again many years later in college, the book took on a whole new meaning to me. I could see the predictions Bradbury made playing out around me. And all these years later, it's even more relevant as our political climate continues to polarize and the extremes on both sides become more extreme and emboldened. Which reminds me of the part I found most frightening both times I read the book. It was the way society just let themselves go down this path because they thought it was easier than having to actually think for themselves. This brought about the rise of alternative facts, or as we call it today, fake news. They chose hedonism and self-centered entertainment over learning and culture, similar to the road that we're on today. Now, I want to leave you with a quote from the book that stuck with me the most. Remember, the firemen are rarely necessary. The public itself stopped reading on its own accord. You firemen provide a circus every now and then at which buildings are set off and crowds gather for the pretty blaze. But it's a small sideshow indeed and hardly necessary to keep things in line. So few want to be rebels anymore. Now on my channel here, we know that banning books is a serious issue. And we want to help with resources that will give everybody access to the books they want to read. One vital resource is your local public library. We've seen a push from the right to defund or even privatize our public libraries because they want us living in a Fahrenheit 451 type world. So make sure you support your local libraries. They're a great place to go when you need a book to read, especially if you're on a budget. And something I was surprised to learn is that you can even check out audiobooks at some libraries. If you want to find your local library, go to usa.gov libraries. I'll leave the link in the description for you. From there, you can find a library close to you and uh, hopefully get some access to some great books that you might want to read. Thanks for joining me today, and please help spread the word and keep all books available to anyone who wants to read them. Don't forget to follow and smash that like button. And if you don't want to wait another week to see this clean-shaven face, follow me on TikTok and Twitch at SmashAdams28, and come back next week when we talk about another banned book 
What about a series of letters that tells a troubling tale of teenage angst and emotion? Until next time, get smashed, everyone. <laughs>